what I want to add to the bottom of the mileage tracker class between the final two curly brackets here is that standard public static void main method to make it easy to run a little snippet of code um, related to the mileage tracker class. All I want to put in this main method is I want us to create a new mileage tracker object with our non-default constructor and then immediately just print that object out, okay? So we start with the same method header we've used before, public, static, void, main, and then the rest of the weird stuff that we will continue to unpack over the next few units. And all I wanna put in here is I wanna create a new variable of type mileage tracker. And I'm gonna call it tracker. And I'm gonna to assign to it the value returned from creating a new mileage tracker object. But instead of calling the default constructor, I'm gonna specify two arguments. I'm gonna specify the distance driven, 100, and the fuel consumed for gallons so that those instance variables get initialized right away with those values. And then I simply I'm gonna do system.out.println. And I'm gonna pass tracker as the argument. So go ahead and type this and compile this and run this. And we've, we've printed variables that refer to objects before. You've printed rectangles um, and we've printed strings. Uh, but let's see what happens when we print um, an object that whose class definition we wrote. We wrote the mileage tracker class. So let's see what gets printed when we run it. So change that to say new bit, and you'll be okay. Oh, leave the string. Perfect. All right, I'm going to run this too. My terminal says mileage tracker at 66A263A. Did anyone else get exactly the same output as me? No. Interesting. Okay. What is the 66A263A? Any ideas? Memory location? Memory location? What else do we refer to this as? The object's what, though? It's like address. Yeah, the object's address, the reference, right? So 66A263A, it is the memory location. It's the memory address of the object in the computer's memory. It's the reference. It's the value we write on the Post-it note for tracker. It's the value we put in the upper right corner of the sh white sheet of paper that represents our object. Um, so that's kind of a cool connection but it's also not very useful, okay? Um, when we printed the rectangle, we got much more useful information. We got the X value, the Y value, the width and the height. That's a lot more useful, okay? We can make our mileage tracker class more useful as well. And the way we do that is by defining an additional method. And in order for this to work, the method header has to be exactly the following public string and the method name. So the return type is string and the method name is two string, it's two string, and there are no parameters. Again, in order for this to work, we have to map, match this method header exactly. And let's add a Java doc comment explaining what this kind of special method is. So the two string method is called automatically when Java needs to convert the object to a string. There are several situations in which Java is gonna wanna con convert an object into a string, one of which is right here. One of which is when we call the println method and we pass in a variable referring to an object, Java is gonna try to convert this object into a string 
instead of printing just the reference. Okay. There are other cases this works, this happens as well, but this is the one we're focused on right now. The two string method returns a string that contains, contains in general, we don't have to do it this way, we usually do it this way. It contains in general all of the instance variables and their values. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. Much like the rectangle, right? For the rectangle, we got X and Y and width and height. That was super useful. We want similar things um, for our mileage tracker class. So let's do that. Let's create a new local variable type string called string. And we're going to create a new string. And I'm going to concatenate together all of these string literals for labels for each instance variable. And then I'm going to concatenate that with the values returned by calling all the accessor methods. And I'm going to put the whole thing in square brackets. You might remember when we were printing rectangles, everything was in square brackets. It's not required. It's just a convention. So I'm going to start with vin. And I'm going to do a colon and I'm going to concatenate this dot get vin and that will start to build up our string. To that, I'm going to concatenate more stuff and I'm going to do each instance variable on its own line just so it's easy to read. I'm going to do distance driven and I'll concatenate the result of get distance driven. And I'm going to add in the unit of miles because units are important. And then I'll do fuel consumed. And that's in unit of gallons. And then I'm going to do mileage. Oh, yeah. So let me slow down here. Um, then distance driven fuel consumed. Those are our instance variables. We can print extra stuff too if we think it'd be helpful. And I think printing the mileage from the mileage tracker would be helpful. So let me have a label here for mileage. And then I'll say this dot get mileage. And that's in units of miles per gallon. So there's a massive string I've built up. And then I'm simply going to say return str. And I forgot parentheses here. There we go. So take a few minutes to type this, compile this, run it. Observe that instead of getting a reference printed to the screen and a memory address, you get a much more useful description of the object. I'm gonna run mine really quick just to make sure it actually works. All right, that's a good sign. That's the reasonable output. Go back to the code here. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same, escape sequences in Java are exactly the same as those in Python. Yep. I saw the semicolons and like, they make it just doing the wrong with that. Oh yeah. One thing I want to clarify, we often associate the two string method with the println method because they often go together, which I get. Just make sure that you don't print anything in the two string method. The two string method should only build a string and return that reference to that string. The two string method doesn't print anything. Okay. If someone else wants to print something like the println method does, fine. It can handle the printing part. Our job in the two string method is just to build up the string. We don't actually print anything. And while we're at it, I guess I have one other thing I want to share with you. In our first unit, I was, uh, we were learning a lot of new syntax, a lot of new terminology. I wanted to be very deliberate. I wanted to be very consistent. 
And so every time we created a new object, whether we did new turtle, new rectangle, whatever, um, I wanted to show you it's the same, same sequence of, of words, same sequence of identifiers. String, str equals new, string, parentheses. Look, it's just like the turtle, it's just like the rectangle, it's just like the random. That said, it's extremely rare to actually bother saying new string and using a parenthesis. And the reason for that is when we use a string literal, and by string literal, I mean these characters in the double quotes, which means the string value is literally square bracket V-I-N. Um, this string literal, Java automatically turns that into a string object. And then we're using the very convenient concatenation operator, which concatenates it with this string and re returns a new string. So we don't need to actually say new string because we're already starting with a string and we're concatenating and getting a new string from that and so on and so forth. So it's really rare to actually ever say new string. So from now on, because we're, we're in our second unit, we're a little bit more comfortable with this stuff, I'll be declaring strings more like this instead. So I just wanted to explain that, that change.